This is Ben, Liam and Bell on Nova. Well, hello there. Uh, this is Bell's Emotional Life Announcement. An interesting show uh, of ups and downs. A lot of emotion in this in this day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, some sad stuff's happened in your life, Bell, uh, which you'll hear about later in the pod. Um, and for the first half, Ben's in, uh, but then he had to leave because his son's a bit sick today, so we did the rest of the show ourselves. Yeah, because he heard that there was going to be some heartfelt content and he said, Pro- to be honest, oh no, probably. Freddie's sick. I would, like to see a, I would like to see a doctor's certificate, <laughs> but it does feel like you were going to get real for a bit and Ben went, nah, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, enjoy. Now I've got to start checking the weather. I'm just not, it's one of those things that I'm just not good at. No, like, you're really not. No, I'm all rugged up and it's 26 and sunny. It's going to be nice. I said yesterday that today is going to be the only good day of the week. Do you know what? Do you know what um, Sarah's ordered me? There's the, well, it's sad because A, she's got me scales, but B, they're these smart scales. Mm. So it just like goes to your phone. But she, she said, <laughs> She said they're good because, like, it says, like, good morning, and it says the weather when you look like... So, so, <laughs> right, it says the weather and your weight. That's all so, you need. yeah, it's like you're fat, but it's going to be a nice day. You know so what I mean? So You have got smart scales. They're coming, yeah. But rather than having a screen, it goes straight to your phone? It, it do, I think it does have the screen. But it tracks but, on so your like, phone So, like, you know, if you're, like, I'm trying to be doing a bit of shredding for the wedding at the moment. Yep. And so you got to, like, put it in your phone every day. But, like, when these smart scales, it just, like, goes straight into the app. And, Is it, but, um, and, and it will also give you the weather. Is it like just weight or is it smart scales like the ones that say this is your body fat percentage, this is where oh, your maybe. muscle is? I this don't know. Is, I've, not, I've not got them yet. I Liam, know they're on their way. You and I are the same size. Yeah. Uh, Visually. Height-wise um, and, to be fair, stock-wise. Yes. Um, what are you weighing these days? Because you've been going to the gym and eating really well a lot Thank for the you. wedding. Uh, 80.6 currently. That's pretty good. What are you on? That's pretty good. I'd be around the 84 mark, I reckon. <gasps> I haven't weighed myself in a while. <gasps> That's huge if yeah. you're lighter than Ben. H- huge if true. I'll bring, my, <laughs> I'll bring my smart scales in when they come in, and that's how we can do the weather. Be that's like, great. Yeah, that's top of, it's 26 and sunny, and I'm a little bit lighter than Ben. <laughs> if you've been waiting to skip the school holiday crowds for your next trip, now's your chance. Take a sneaky weekend up with whatif.com. Just imagine you're on the beach and no one else oh, is around. Amazing. Ooh. Book accommodation and more on the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Study has come out and revealed that Australians actually have the sexiest accent. So congrats, guys. That's really exciting for us. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ripper. And uh, Ben, you had a great idea. You said, why, why don't we call an American sex line mm. and then ask them to do an Australian accent? Because well, that, you know, I mean, that's you, sexy, yeah, right? Yeah, if you're going to be paying big bucks, you might as well get the accent that's well, deemed the most sexy. Well, that's it. And, you know, most of the world agree. Um, so we, we do actually have a number here. I don't know how this is going to go, but um, it, it's punched in. Um, let's give this our best shot. You've come to the right place because I am just a nasty little <laughs> and so are all Whoa. of my girlfriends. Whoa. Do you want to get off with us? Oh, my God. you do. Please enter your credit card number followed by the pound key. Quick, Bill, give us your credit card. What? <laughs> no, seriously, Bill, I'm going to need your credit card. No, can no, we? Bill, this is yeah. love right here. We need your card. Yeah, Bill, you slide things down. You seriously. can claim it back on tax. Just give us the card. Thank okay, you. Can I I'm just punching the numbers here. <laughs> this is going to cost so much money. <laughs> Thank you. If you like hot-legged babes, press one. Ooh. Kinky or taboo action, press one. Two, mm-hmm. mature mommy calls. Ooh. Press mommy. three. If you love big tits, press <laughs> oh my four. God. Yeah, press four. Go on. <laughs> All of the above. You are now connected. Oh. Hello. Oh, hey. How you doing there? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. This is my first time doing this. No need to be nervous. You can tell me anything, sweetie. <laughs> what do you like to talk about while you Uh... Like Australiana stuff, like kangaroos and like boomerangs and stuff. Ah. Uh, Are you American or? Uh huh. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I just find Australian accents like really sexy. I don't know. It's just always been a bit of a thing for me. I think it recently got voted the most sexy accent. Do you do an Australian accent at all, or? I don't. Sorry. Could you, could you give it a little try, maybe? Just say, like, day, mate, or something? Good day, mate. Oh, that's good. Could you call me a jolly swag man? Call you a what? 
a jelly swag man? A jelly swag man? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Fair dinkum. Yeah. Hmm. Jelly swag man. Oh, bonza. Keep going. You're a, what was it again? I'm a jelly swag man. You're a jelly swag man. Struth. Jeez. You're a jelly swag man. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anytime. Well, anyway, hooroo. Back at ya. Smoke, smoke goes over, so I better go. Okay, bye. <laughs> that was the quickest money she's ever made. I reckon the thing is, I think she's had weirder calls. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Totally. She's, she's like, like, is that it? <laughs> she's like, that was one of the easier ones. <laughs> that was the easiest 400 bucks I've ever made. Wow. Wouldn't say she nailed the Australian no, accent. No, no. She didn't know what she was doing. No. She's also jelly, like, oh, jelly. Oh. A jelly swag man. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, it's 6.10. Eager Beaver, Hannah in Camberwell. Shall we kick into it? Let's go, guys. The builders of the Metro Tunnel reckon it'll be open to commuters from next September. That's not too far away. The Metro Tunnel will run from Cranbourne in the east to Sunbury in which direction? West. Nice. One in eight Aussies have admitted to shoplifting. Have you... <laughs> Come on. Uh, I think when I was a child, I do remember my mum taking me back to return to Mentos, but I stopped. <laughs> Call the police, Ben. Have <laughs> Hannah arrested on the spot. Hannah, stay where you are. The authorities are inbound. <laughs> They're coming to Camberwell now. Um, we will actually hold that. If you win the quiz, we won't call the police on you. Okay, so you, that's uh, a little deal. A little deal between us. Okay, all right, you dirty shoplifter. Let's do this. Three questions left. Uh, beer pie in Sydney have reached eighteen what? dollars. Gross. What has? Sorry, I'm like that. beer pints. Like oh. yeah. Mm. What is the beer one size smaller than a pint? Uh, well, it depends where you are. Midi. It does depend. Mm. No, it is actually a very confusing question. There's a Can pot. You, there's yeah. a pint and a pot. And then there's and? one sort of in between. That. Yeah. What's the other one? Oh, a schooner. Yeah. Nice. Skewy, skewy, moy, moy. All right, two more questions to go. Uh, there is a Seinfeld reunion in the works, apparently. What's the name of Jerry's enemy? Newman. 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 <laughs> yeah, well delivered as well. <laughs> uh, 50 artists are going to be playing 50 classics at a big concert in November at Rod Laver. Looks awesome. Uh, one of those is Missy Higgins. Can you finish these classic lyrics? When everyone wants a little more. God. Mm. Um, rhymes nah. with far. Name hey, of the sorry? song. It rhymes with the word far, Hannah. Na, 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 na. Ah, you are. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm going to have to call the police. <laughs> You're an eager beaver. You got four questions right, but now you're going to prison. <laughs> oh, that is rough. Uh, Sarah in Essendon, can you finish the Missy Higgins lyrics? When everyone wants a little more, so that I do remember to never go that far. Could you leave me with a scar? Nice. You got that Soul Origin voucher. Yeah, got that Missy Higgins down, Pat. You also get to pick the next song we play. So, would you like to hear this strange version of Paper Planes? With Boom. Looney Tunes cartoon effects because on commercial radio we're not allowed to play real guns. Apparently. Or do you want to hear Gym Class Heroes? What are you feeling? Yeah, gym Class Heroes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We could always have a Gym Class off tomorrow because they've got a few tunes. They do. They do. You remember Ba-da-da-da? I do. Good song. (laughs) 
Ben, Bell, grab your keys. Let's open up the forbidden folder. This morning's topic, taxidermy. Mmm, like stuffing animals. I, I think we wanted to do this one because, Bell, is it true that you want to get your cat Gary stuffed when when that sad time comes where he is no longer of this earth? Yeah, well, I, I, I did mention it's an option that I wouldn't be against. I, I'm, I haven't locked into it yet, but I am... I'm not against it because if he, well, when he passes away, oh my gosh, it's going to be awful. But just the thought, the thought of either burying or cremating him, I just thought, why not, if it, you know, it's done properly, get him in like positioned in like his favorite little ball where the way he sleeps, where he's all curled up. And I'd have him so his eyes are closed. Like I don't want like the glass eyes or anything. It would just be so he's like sleeping. And then he could just be like a little ball and I can put him like... On a table or something. <laughs> he's already got one eye closed all the time anyway because he's missing it. But, yeah, I, I find that unnerves me. Like, I, I love my, my dog Toby a lot, but I wouldn't wouldn't be getting him stuffed. You know, you said, like, oh, I don't like the idea of, like, cremating or burying. Yeah. Like, well, why is it different rules for Nana, you know? Like, that's, you're not... You're not you stu- know that I look at animals stuffing. and people very differently. Well... Like, I, I look at I look at them almost the same. Like they're just they're they're humans. Like you know you, you know they they have a special connection, like a bond. They can be like a family if they're in your house and they're the best part of your exactly. day. Exactly. Like no, home I to put them. I put animals far above people. <laughs> always. Oh have. right. So, oh okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. You know that. Right. My, okay. Yeah. Cremate. Yeah. Cremate me. I don't care. So yeah, cremate. Not. Cremate family. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, but but we we have to preserve yes. almost like Tutankhamun, like a like a yes, so like a beautiful. mummy. We've got to preserve. Why do you think the Egyptians had the giant cats? <laughs> yeah. They they rule. <laughs> well, either way, that's why it's a fascinating topic because we know it happens, right? So mm. up next, we are going to be joined by a taxidermist here in Melbourne, someone who does this for a living. They they stuff animals. Um, geez, so many questions. I mean, for starters, how, how much does it cost to stuff a cat? I don't know. Maybe this is probably Bell just trying to get some quotes here. So we're, <laughs> oh, we're, hey, we're, hopefully it's not soon. Well, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, maybe it will change by the time Gary passes. But we we're, we're doing that next for the forbidden folder. Loud Luxury Brando with Body on No. 100. Good morning. You are here with Ben, Liam and Bell. We've opened up the Forbidden Folder this morning. This is where we keep all the ideas that are a little too taboo for breakfast radio. Uh, we're talking taxidermy this morning. And Mario joins us, who is a taxidermist. I believe that's what you called when you do taxidermy. Is that right, Mario? That's right. That's correct. Yes, and so does taxidermying pay the bills? Uh, yeah, look, I can't complain. I work for myself, so that's that's great. Yes, not a problem. How do you get into this line of work? It feels very like, surely there's not that much work in it, right? I do a lot of work sort of for the general public, but also for a lot of schools and colleges too. They get things uh, mounted for display purposes oh, and for educational yeah. purposes. So it's, it's quite a broad range, actually. And so how did you yeah. get into taxidermying? It really started off as a hobby um, and sort of went from there and from one thing led to another. And before I knew it, I was doing it uh, full time. You say uh, hobby. Yeah. Now, that concerns yep. me, Mario, because yeah. normally when you hear about people oh. playing with dead animals, they turn into serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer and that sort of thing. Luckily, yeah. you're just a regular guy doing doing normal above-board business. Yeah, and no, I started off actually because I used to like my fishing and sort of you'd go out and catch a fish and you think, I wonder if I could do anything else with it apart from eating it. And it sort of went from there. So, Whoa. Mm. Mario, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like you're self-taught because it was a hobby and then you kind of just learned how to do it. Was Did you just watch a lot of YouTube videos? How did you learn how to taxidermy? Mm, no, nah, well, see, I, I've been doing it for over oh, 30 years now. So yeah. 30 years ago, there's no such thing as YouTube and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. really, it was a matter of going to the library and picking up books and wow. reading from there. So there was no internet in those days. So it was very, very hard to learn. I've been to, uh, I went to someone's house a few years ago who did taxidermying and they had like a giant was it Mario, shed. was it? <laughs> I don't know if it was Mario, to be honest. You're, all, you're old flame. Hey? There's this guy, <laughs> no, this no, nice guy. Like, he was a friend of a friend, but right. he had a big shed out the back. I mean, it may have been you. It was in Melbourne. Yep. But, um, yeah, a big shed out the back with them all. But he did he did roadkill. Um, oh. Okay. Like, yeah, so he'd find, or he'd be given, like, people would have roadkill and go, oh, this is a big, beautiful possum or whatever that, <laughs> yep. Has, yep. that doesn't have a lot <laughs> this of a, This is the biggest injury. possum I've ever seen. i got to get this <laughs> yeah, and stuff. and then they had it taxidermied. But, like, yep. is that, do you do that as well? 
No, look, any native animals you can't actually do because they're all native animals are protected. So you really, huh. by law, you're not supposed to pick up roadkills and take them home and mount well, them. So I never um, went there. <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. So um, if you do native animals, you do require licenses and permits to be able to do them. So it's not something you can just pick up the road and, and do if you really want to do it. What's your What's your prize piece? Probably the best thing I've done is a, a full giraffe. So that's oh, my God. God. Oh, Are you for real? Where do you what? keep it? Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming it's super tall. Oh, uh, yeah, it's in the work. Oh, it's about five metres high, so it's in the workshop at the moment. So, yeah. What's the smallest thing you've done? Yeah. Probably a mouse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. sense. <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to do an egg. Yeah, just a quick, quick, quick job in the morning. Um, so, and, yeah. and what, what are we talking like for, for eyes? Is, are they little glass, like beady yeah. little marble things? Yeah, no, nah, you've got to buy special eyes. There's companies over in the States and overseas that do specialised eyes just mm. for taxidermy. Do you ever do silly stuff where you put like the giraffe's eyes on the mouse? No, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned giraffe was like your prized piece. What's been the trickiest taxidermy you've had to do? Usually fish are pretty hard. You can't use a form for the fish, so you've yeah. basically got to carve them out individually, and then yeah. you've got to paint all the colours back into them. How does the fish not smell? Yeah. Well, all skins have to be treated, so you've got to tan the hide. So the same way you would tan leather, okay. you do the same thing with the animal. So whether it's a fish skin or a, an animal skin, you've got to tan it, basically turn it into leather. Yeah, right. And so then it'll keep forever. Early, early doors when you're on the dating scene, does it wig people out? And they're like, what do you do for grass? And you're like, oh, yeah, I stuff animals. Uh, yeah, well, they usually, usually sort of confuse me with the taxi driver if I tell them taxidermist. So they're like, oh, sort of, some know, some don't so. <laughs> Yeah. I think if anyone confuses you with that, you can leave them. <laughs> it's not worth it. You haven't been, I've seen you in a car once and you just got a, <laughs> got a giraffe in your shed. Weirdest taxi yeah. driver I've ever met. Uh, look, it's been, it's been a super interesting chat this morning, Mario. If uh, you listening need anything taxidermy, you can head to Melbourne Taxidermy Services on Facebook. Mario, thanks for the chat this morning, mate. No problem, anytime. You have a great day. Uh, see you guys. Bye. See you, Mario. We uh, should see if we can uh, rustle up a second eye for your cat, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's no, got a few he cat eyes. No, no, I was actually given the option, and I said what? No. Really? Yeah, Fake yeah, eye? No, you can give him a glass eye. Seriously, oh. you should have put like a little laser eye on it for night. <laughs> <laughs> so it can find snacks no. late at night. <laughs> can warm up its own tuna. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know Belle's cat's got one eye. Yeah. <laughs> Just Liam and Belle here with you at the moment. Yeah. Um, Bed's had to leave this morning because his son Freddie's a little bit sick. He's going to be okay, but yeah. he's just he's just going home to do the right thing because, of course, dad duties come before radio duties. Not good enough. Well, I did. I mean, I did offer to go as the Godfather. He said, "Mate, no, you just you, you just stay." So that that's fine. So. Yes. Um, but to be honest, Belle, this is actually perfect timing because we can speak openly whilst he's not here about what we're doing for his 30th birthday. He wants to do so many things before Ben Harvey turns 30. 30 things before he's 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 30. Yeah, brand new dad Ben is, and also 29 and turning 30 in exactly a month. Yeah, and we want him to experience 30 new things before that, just to pack in as much fun as possible into the 20s. A lot of people say it's the best decade of your life. Um, Open to suggestions. 13, 24, 10. What do you think Ben should be doing before he turns 30? We've only got one month. We had some great suggestions yesterday. Um, He should swim with sharks, go X-throwing. Go to the airport and book the next available flight. Or if you can't do that, have Liam pick the next soonest flight he can find online. I reckon he should go bull riding. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the bull riding one. I like the, the flight. I think that's very cool. Mystery flight. Got any very ideas, cool. Belle? What do you think we should um, do? Look, mine actually is very, very tame. Uh, but I was either today or tomorrow going to go get my usual Manny Petty. Um, and just thought Ben could come along with me oh, and yeah, get a little pedicure because yeah. I know he hasn't had that before. He's, he's not out of Manny Petty before. To be honest, the, the place that I go near here, the uh, last time I went, there were three guys all separately there getting a pedicure, and it, it, I think it's really taking off for guys. I think so the, you might the love it. closest Ben's got is what he did with me in Bali, which is where we dipped our feet in that tank with the little fish nibble with dead skin off. <laughs> 
Do they do that here? Or is that only like in Indonesia? No, that doesn't get. I don't think that's here. Mm, no. <laughs> I'd love to find some of those fish. No, nah, but you know what? I'd love, to, I'd love to have them at home, like sea monkeys, and just like I'm home, boys. No, no, no. Eat you... up. You know. <laughs> you know what's better than the tiny fish? What? Is the cheese grater that they use? Oh. Yeah. And they fully grate. It's like a full grater, and they just grate your heel. They grate all that dead skin, and it all falls off. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, thirteen twenty four ten. While Ben is not here, let's build this list up of experiences, things that he's got to try before he is thirty. Uh, with your help, of course, Shereen Melton. Uh, what do you think Ben should do before he's thirty? Um, I reckon you guys should choose a tattoo for him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he he is the only person on the team without tattoos. Yeah, he's the only clean skin. Yeah. Bell's got six. I you guys I've got three. Um, yeah, I, I could think of a ton of things. Like you know how people have, you know that love heart where it's like says mum with the with the script around it. Like he could just get like yeah. Liam on it. I don't know. Oh, hang on, can I be in there? Uh, you've got to be friends for longer than ten years. It's no, be, I feel he'd so. had a love heart and it would be PlayStation in the middle. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that, I mean, one, that's also funny. Play, <laughs> PS5, you could just have it in the love heart. Oh, that's a great suggestion, Shree. I think we could give him a tattoo before he turns thirty. Uh, Tony in Melton, what do you think? Very extreme. However, my friend did this for my other friend's 30th. Mm. Um, we pranked her on getting arrested. Oh. oh. So she didn't actually get arrested? No, she didn't get actually arrested, but we pranked her to getting arrested. So it's actually Hang on, did you have like real... Of like, oh, you've gone through your 20s and you were young, dumb and... Yeah. But, but did you use real police officers' time or was it just like strippers or... <laughs> Well, we, no, we just, I think we just used friends. I don't think we were allowed to yeah, use right. friends. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, like, Well, I was thinking, like, I don't know if that's allowed, but I would love to get a real, if like someone knows a real cop or there's a real cop listening, we could maybe get him to just be handcuffed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, what, you know, or he has to do like some small crime, like he jaywalks or something and then he gets handcuffed. So then he'd say he's been arrested. Yes. Because that, like, that would be a new experience. That's yeah, I don't think there. just being handcuffed. I don't, need, I don't think he has to spend a night in the cell, but like just being. Uh, could. Being, yeah. Or, I, you know, just thinking of the emergency services. Would a good one be um, sliding down a fire pole, fireman's pole? That's fun. Like that would yeah. be awesome. Like not many people get to experience. Or just that. riding in a in a fire truck. Yeah, yeah. Like these are all. Hey, they're all got. It's a big list. It's, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get through thirty things. So they're all on the list so far. Michelle and Karen Downs. What should Ben experience for the first time before he's thirty? Morning, puffing belly. Oh. Go ride on puffing belly yeah. and learn how to pole dance. Oh, oh, wow. Like on a stripper pole. Okay. Choo, choo. Is that all right. on Buffing Billy? No, no. no. <laughs> I mean, you, there's two separate suggestions uh, there, yeah, Michelle. Look, Michelle, yeah. I, um, I do pole dancing weekly. Uh, it's it's my hobby. So uh, he can just come to one of the classes with me mm. if he wants. I've actually done pole dancing with Ben before. Oh, yeah, you did. So not an ex- new experience. However, pretty sure he hasn't done Buffing Billy yet. So all aboard. Yeah, we can go on Buffing Billy. Uh, Bo in Sky. We're trying to do 30 new experiences for Ben before he's 30. What would you like to put on the list? Oh, I reckon he should definitely build up the confidence. Lucky he's got a month to do it, but he should get a piercing. A piercing? Yes. He doesn't have a piercing. Bo, Bo, do you have a piercing? I do. I've got a couple. What, where, where, where are we talking? What have you got? Uh, mainly my traguses, so the middle of your ear. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah they're kind of ear. cool. They're in fashion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like that, Bo. I reckon we could, that's that's a very achievable one. I think we could, we, maybe we could surprise him because he'll be back at work tomorrow. Maybe we could surprise what? him with a piercing. Yeah, I've got, yeah, is that nice trackers? Little quick piercing? Yep, yeah, got, yeah, it's I've that little got, bit. Bo, that... I've got the middle of my ear pierced as well. The the little, the, the bit that comes out of your head. He could also get, we could, <laughs> or <laughs> we could get him a. <laughs> the cartilage uh, bit, I've got that. We could get him a belly button piercing. That's... Or I think our heads have all gone to the same thing, Bo. Would you Prince prefer a. No, not that. no, that's that's a bit hectic. Um, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably. Yeah, right. Bit much. What about the the old nipple? Just the bar through the nip. Bar through the nip could be good. A bar through, bar the, through nip. the nip could yeah. be good. Yeah, well, Ben's you. got Ben's got a lot of hair there. Um, I, I, these are great suggestions, Bo. I, I like the idea of him doing all this other stuff, like he's getting arrested whilst he's got the piercing. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's pole dancing, yeah, puffing yeah, Billy's yeah. there. Yeah. It's all happening on, on puffing Send him Billy. him to go get his nails done afterwards. Exactly, well, that's it. Bo. Yep. Yeah, that was Bell's suggestion. Uh, that's great. Okay, this is this is this list is looking good. Ben's thirty before thirty. We've got a month to accomplish all of these things and much more. How's this? One in eight Australians shoplifters. Yeah, new studies come out. 
Um, yeah, supposedly in the last 12 months, one in eight Aussies have admitted to it. That's as many as 2.4 million of us. Yeah, because everything's getting so expensive. Now, if I look around at the moment, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people exactly mm. here. So at least one of us. That one is a being shoplifter. you, Belle. What? You're, you're the shoplifter. No. I've never shoplifted. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly saying here, hand on heart, swear to God, never shoplifted in my life. I'd feel, I just have that thing like I'd feel too bad. Like I'd just. Same. No, you don't. <laughs> oh. You're the one in eight. I would never. I would never. Ever. You, you, I don't, you've opened, yeah, so you're putting, you're doing that face. Like, I know you, I know. Look, I, um, I don't think you're stealing like TVs and like putting DVDs to any shorts. Look, but I I'm, haven't, look, look, I lived in a share house with so five did I. boys. Uh, We've all lived in share years houses. Ago. Yeah, and uh, they would often go do the shop. Uh, and it was a local, you know, big supermarket chain. And the feeling was and that, like... So that you'd send him in to distract everyone and then you'd steal no, the stuff. No, Is that I, how it worked? I was, I was like sometimes, you know, just still at home or not there, but they'd always come back with heaps of shopping. And I was like, wow, it's expensive cheese. And they'd be like, yeah, it was pretty cheap today. And it was like, you know, it was an unspoken thing that, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into too much detail. Ash in the newsroom. <laughs> Have you ever shoplifted? No, definitely not. You getting the vibe that Bell's a shoplifter? I get the vibe. Oh my gosh! No, gone. I lived with I'm a guy not. in two thousand and eight who stole some expensive not. cheese, but not me. I'm not. I do. I would never. Hey, I you, would said I, that I, one I, time. I feel like you're the type of person that's like it's not shoplifting, but every now and then I've like, oh, whoops, I've made a mistake. I'm the self serve, and I just didn't scan that one. No, no. But I, look, I um, I I do understand with the cost of living going up that people, you know, one. Oh, everyone. Eight, yeah. Look. That, at- yeah, I, I can see that stat being true. Are you? But I wouldn't be that one in eight. Okay, well, look, if you if you want to be honest, unlike Belle, and you are a shoplifter and proud, um, I would be keen to pick your brain this morning because honestly, these I, know, I sort of yeah, I get it. I don't I don't think this is a made out made up stat. I don't think it's Fugazi. I think it's it's you know it's real. Uh, Thirteen twenty four ten. If you are a shoplifter or you do it occasionally. Um, and you'd like to state your case, uh, this is an open phone policy. We would like to speak to you this morning. In fact, we'll give you a $150 voucher to La Cabra. They're <laughs> I very think good. They want to be they're, associated well, they're with good, shoplifters. They're good, honest people. Just set, spend the voucher and don't. Well, you can't. It's, you can't. I, don't I mean, you might. You people. might be able to take the forks and stuff, but I don't think you'll be, no, you. You can't steal. Take... It's a restaurant. You can't no, steal. No, do not take any of their things except for their delicious food in your belly. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's like the price of everything is so expensive. I am not surprised one bit by this stat. Well, you're not surprised because you are a shoplifter. You're just not willing. No, to tell anyone about I am it. not. Okay. Well. I just see why people would do it. Megan from Springvale, <laughs> you are one in eight. Uh, you you shoplift. Well, you, you got to do what you got to do when you got no money. You got to get by. Mm. Yeah, I mean, are you doing like little bits here and there with the self serve or uh, like uh, all out? I what mean, you... I mean, I mean, the price of meat nowadays. Nobody really wants to pay that, and the tax on top of it, you know. A little bit of meat here and there is not not a big deal. I get, I get, like it's, it's sort of like that Robin Hood thing, I suppose, like rob mm. from the rich, give to the poor, sort and of thing. Do you not feel like g- guilty though, Megan, for like doing the wrong thing? Look, at the end of the day, when you got to feed yourself, and you're at that point where like you've got nothing and no one like that's going to be there for you. You, you mean you got to go and do what you got to do for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I've just moved to Springvale. I mean, I just got a new apartment through Department of Housing, and I mean, I won't be doing that because my son will be coming home. But you know, at the end of the day, when you're young, and you know, I mean, come on, the yeah. fees that you get from the government that pay get, literally get you by within like two days. Yeah. So when you're young and you know you need to feed yourself, I mean. You, you, it's not real guilt that you're thinking about at the time. Yeah, you're more just thinking about your own situation, I which I get side, as maybe. well, especially when you know that there's like, it's not like it's a nice thing. Like big companies are still making big money. Mm. 
I see your side, Megan. Thank you so much for the call. Uh, now, obviously, like we we don't like condone this behaviour. We're not like, encouraging no, you to do no. this. No, well, no. We're, we're um, purely I mean, saying you asked, that you asked me, like, "How do you do it? What are you? You know, what are your methods?" But well, we don't want to give ideas. No, well, look, I, yeah, but as we're saying, this is clearly a thing that people are doing. It is. Like, it's like you, you're seeing a lot of the stats. So, but but good on people for at least you know admitting to it this morning. Uh, Morgan in Cranbourne, you're doing the same thing. Oh, yes, I'm guilty, unfortunately. Um, taken, putting in avocados as brown onions, because honestly, avocados, so expensive. I'm not paying full price for that. They're a brown onion. They're <laughs> yes, brown on the brown outside. Onion, absolutely. I thought it was an yeah, onion. Yeah, but like, they, like, that's just like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yes, it's more expensive because it's, it's more of a luxury product. Like, it's harder to get an avocado than an onion. But like, do you know well, what I mean? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've got a point there, but. Uh, again, not paying a dollar fifty for a, an avocado. But it's a dollar fifty. Like, I mean, I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like. Oh, but you, yeah, if you want the avocado, you pay the dollar fifty. You know. Oh, hundred percent. But it adds up if you want to buy four avocados. Yeah, I get it. I get <laughs> that. But like, do you know what I mean? It's just like, well, what? You know, I don't know. I don't oh, understand. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand it. But like, I'm... no, I, I get you. I get you. But minimum wage, I got to do what mm. the lady said. You got to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. um... Anyway, thanks for your call. Louise in Bayswater. Uh, Liam's judging um, so hard. Well, dude, I mean, yeah, Morgan, well, I, I am it. I in the wrong? I mean, I, I know I know. I get times are tough, but like, like I, I don't think stealing's a good thing. Like, no, no, and, and, and I don't either, but I see I see why people would, would slip every so often. Slip an avocado as a brown onion, a green onion, whatever it was. <laughs> green onion. If brown you put that onion. in the machine, you'll be found out. That's not even a thing. <laughs> Louise, I was thinking of an avocado from Bayswater. Um, yeah. You are also willing to admit you're one and eight uh, of the Aussies that are admitting to shoplifting. Well, mine's a little bit of a different example to your previous callers, and the first call actually made me feel sad. So I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. Yeah, for but, sure. Um, I actually have a partner in crime. My children, um, wheeling the pram, <laughs> wheeling the pram, busy chaos. You know, stupid o'clock, and I've accidentally, inadvertently shoplifted by putting stuff under the pram and walking out without paying for my normal grocery load and then forgetting that I may have had something under the pram. And I have actually gone back and been honest about it. So, okay, <laughs> oh, okay. so you're not chalking it up as baby brain and, and walking out with 30. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Kilos of and if I had a thought about it, it would have been a bottle of wine, but it was probably just something boring like baby wipes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good of you, Louise. That's good. Like going back and, and admitting. Do you, look, do you normally go back, Belle, when you... Oh, my gosh. Lift, look, or? I don't. I said I lived in a share house and, and you know, sometimes the housemates, the guys, yeah, they, they let slip. Um, but I so did not. So you lived in a share house where other people did sometimes. Mm, yes. Okay. And uh, definitely I did not ingest that food. Uh, <laughs> but, Liam, you ask the question. You can't judge. You can't judge these people. You know, everyone's getting well, by. Everyone's trying I, their I'm best. I'm sorry, but I expensive. think it is. I think it's bad. I don't, I think, uh, yeah, I don't... I, I, I respect no matter- where your morals lie. For sure. And I get like, I'm obviously, you know, in a privileged position and, you know, I've, I've got a good job and, and that sort of thing. But I just, I can't get out that like, I don't know. I don't know if it's like parents or whatever or the way, but I would, mm. I would like, I'd feel just like. You're a good person. If You're I a did very the good wrong. person. Even with the bags, the bags suck when you have to pay for the bags, when you forget your bags and you're like, oh, geez, as if I have to pay. But do you know what I mean? Like. Yes. I'm still putting the 20 cents in. Yes. Well, that, yes, but that's that's I I love that they've brought that in because that is a great reminder for you to bring your own bag then. And once you pay twenty cents once, BYO, yeah. always. Well, look, it's it's a real conversation to have, but um, yeah, appreciate people for at least getting involved with this one this morning. <laughs> Bell, this morning um, you have a, a life update for us, um, and it's it's not particularly a fun one. No. Um, so a few months ago, uh, if you're listening to this show or following me on, on Instagram, uh, I announced that I was engaged. Um, I was engaged to uh, my partner at the time, Luke. Um, we've been together for a few years. Uh, unfortunately, that engagement has ended. Um, and I wanted to share this this morning. It, it's been it's been a little bit now. Um, and people, I've been getting messages from people saying, where's your ring and what's happening and and what's going on and noticing that, you know, I've moved back home and, and I haven't been as open on air recently um, as I would like to have been. So I wanted to get you across it this morning listening because I feel like I owe it to you. Um, we do share a lot of our lives on this show um, and I, I felt like I owed it to you to be up to date with where I'm at in my life at the moment. Now, I am going to get emotional and I'm sorry, but 
I'm not going to go into detail about why it ended. Um, but what I will say is in this day and age, you can't take everything that you see on social media and in the public eye as fact. And things happen behind closed doors that we all face, whether it's in family or friends or relationships. And you don't know anybody's full story. And I, um, you know, I put on a brave face every day, but it wasn't good. And we've definitely made the, the right decision. I've made the right decision. And as a 28-year-old in this incredible time in my life with this brand new job, this was the right decision to make. Um, I've moved back to Melbourne. I, I have been promoted here and it was at, I was at a crossroads. So I had to make a decision. And um, for me and my future and my career, this is what I've chosen. I really, really, really want to thank you, Liam and Ben, who, yes, has had to go home, but I want to thank you, Liam, for your support and everybody that has supported me these last few weeks and months. It's been a while. And coming into work every day and helping me do the show. It's been fantastic. So thank you for that. Um, I also want to say if you're listening this morning and you're going through a breakup, especially if it's someone you thought you'd spend the rest of your life with, then I'm with you in spirit. And it, it's just a big onwards and upwards for me at the moment. And um, it, yeah, if you're going through the same thing, I'm with you. And it's all going to, it's all going to get, we're going to get through it. It'll all blow over whatever, whatever drama comes with it or whatever difficulties come with it, we'll get through it. So, yeah, I just wanted to sh get you across that this morning, uh, let you know where I'm at. Um, and, yeah, that's that's the decision that I've made. Yeah, and w we love you, Belle. And, it's uh, look, it's obviously a tricky time and it's um, never easy going through these sorts of things, especially, you know, when you're even in your own sort of like personal life, but when you're living a little bit more of a, a public life and you sort of, you know, we so often talk about our other halves mm. and, yeah, uh, and lives do, a lot. and that <laughs> sort of stuff on the show. So it's sort of, you know, it's obviously hard to keep those two things separate. So, yeah, no, obviously appreciate you um, sharing this morning and being so open with everything. But, no, um, I, it, it, look, it, it's it's the right thing to do. And, yeah, I um, like I said, it's been a while. So uh, I've, uh, just working through it. And like everybody would know if you've gone through a breakup, uh, which majority of us have, you go through all the different stages. So I felt like this was the right time to share it. Absolutely. Um, look, they're the worst, but you've been doing a great job uh, as well. Interesting morning as well, because yeah. <laughs> um, Belle, you just um, shared some, some sad news with us. Yeah. Um, I did just share that um, my relationship has ended. Uh, so it might be a bit confusing because people saw that I was recently engaged, but um, no, no longer. And I wanted to get you across that. And we were going to move on, but we've gotten a call from Jules in Hillsville. Jules, uh, good morning. Good morning, Val. Uh, thank you so How much for giving us a buzz. I hear that you uh, you might be going through something similar. Exactly the same thing. Was engaged, meant to get married on my 50th after being with my partner for 20 years. Turned fifty on the twenty third of September, and now living on my own. Oh wow! So I am so proud of you. Oh. As I am thinking to myself, life begins at fifty, Belle. Well, <laughs> that, that's that's really nice to hear, Jules. Because I was at the point where I thought, does life begin at twenty eight? I'm twenty eight, and I thought I was, you know, I'm coming up to thirty, and I thought it's a bit of a crossroads, like I said, and and had to make a decision um, for the best. But Jules, to hear that you're fifty and 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 you're in this same boat, my goodness, I'm I'm so. I'm kind of I'm so proud of you for calling up and and sharing this. Not proud and, of you. <laughs> <laughs> but also, um, it, it sounds like maybe yeah, this is for the best for you. Are you yes, feeling refreshed? Do you feel? I mean, twenty years is so long. Yeah, it is. But you know, you've got to get over it and move on. And I'm in a beautiful place. Like it's gorgeous up where I live. So mm. I'm happy. I'm happy. I've got my cat, and you know. I'll be good. Jules, I've I'll got my cat too. I've got my cat. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, we're crazy cat ladies together. That's great. <laughs> and there is but nothing really wrong with that. <laughs> so proud of you to say that on air. Well done. Oh, you too, Jules. Thank you so much for the call and all the very best. Life begins at 50. Felt like a real stepbrother's like, did we just become best friends? So I think you and Jules and your cats should go out for a, for a coffee not, later Not our on. cats. Gary can't be around other cats. That's so, true. So, no, the cats Gary will be... Does. <laughs> 
have feline HIV. But I think that's enough uh, sad news for the yeah. morning. I think we'll try and move on. <laughs> for more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.